gutting these halibut. Dressing them, I guess is the technical term. Dressing them. It's, uh, removing the guts, taking out the gonads and scraping the bloodline and sweetmeats. And lots of people ask why we gut our halibut but not our codfish. And that's just because our halibut quota is uh, based on dressed weight. So when you bring them to the cannery, you get your weight. And that's what's deducted from your IFQ quota. So they gotta be gutted. And hey, I actually like it over here too because well, we had the table over here before, and I was always afraid of them going crazy and whoop, flopping overboard. Now they can't. They're just gonna land on the deck. Not unless he goes really crazy and whoop. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, you want to get a close-up? Is that what you're waiting for? Next one. Show you real quick how to gut a halibut. Just, uh, there are many ways to gut one. This is our certain way, so I'll show you. Grab the gill plate. Sometimes when they're uh, pretty fresh out of the water, it'll be pretty tight, so you'll really have to grab it and crank it up. There's this little flap of skin here holding the gill plate. Give that a little cut to give yourself some extra room. Chin strap right here, cut in there. That opens up your your gill plate and you can reach your hand in there and grab on the gills and just give it like a kind of rotation like that that lifts this uh, gill plate out and then you just give them a cut right there and then after that you uh, reposition your hand to grab the gills like this and give it like a clockwise rotation Meanwhile, pushing on the gill plate with your hand to give yourself sight. And there's just this little membrane up here where muscles attach to the spine. Just give that a cut. Kind of go like that and then twist your blade the other way. It's diamond shape, the spine right there. And then just kind of scrape it back to these collarbones here. After that, slide them that way. Stick your knife into his a vent here and just kind of slice until you get about this far from the tip and just curve your blade around and it, it's kind of a weird feeling but you cross your arms and just follow it around like that lifting up meanwhile cutting down because there are more muscles here that connect the gut sac to the spine go back in do the same thing on the opposite side this is just more by feel at this point, so you see how that gut sack just pulls out like that. After you cut those muscles, you kind of see the ends right here, right there and there. It should just pull right out. You can also see them right here. Those were the attaching muscles. We call those the sweet meats. Those get scraped out by Tristan along with the bloodline. Take your knife. Give a quick slice to aid in the bloodline removal. And then at the very back, you can probably maybe almost see there's a, just the gonads. That's their, their breathing uh, organs. You just reach in there and kind of poke your finger one way, twist it, other way, twist it. That rips up the membranes and out they come. Get rid of those and then you just grab your scraper, you've got just the ice cream scooper, they make longer handle ones with just like a sharpened chunk of, uh, of steel with teeth put in them. But we like these, the other ones are like 
takes a lot more leverage to scrape out blood lines than sweet meat. These ones you just stick your hand in there. Keep all that leverage, keep your wrists from getting super sore and just uh, scrape that bloodline out. And then here's the sweet meats. Just scrape those off the spine because those are quick to spoil. Scrape the rest of that gurry out of there and there you have it. Dressed out of it. There it is. That's Tristan's job. He knows how to do it. Yeah. I just explained it for him. Yeah, that's good. And he likes that, right? Oh. Go full speed here and win a race. Some people have asked if we should wear a, like a chainmail glove to protect from cuts, and nah, not really. Not necessary. Yeah, I wonder if they're hard to move in. No, they're pretty loose, but just not needed. You know what you're doing. Yep. You cut yourself, you did something wrong. Your knife typically isn't pointed toward your hands, so. Probably a 20 pound gut sack. Yeah, what's your secret? <laughs> yep, yeah, there's my elbow. These big ones can be kind of hard to gut. Get these guys down on the 
slush ice. Oh, we got a ton of uh, length for the big one. Oh we right. uh, yeah, we'll bring you back once we're measuring out. Put your guesses down below uh, how big this big baby is. I'll give you five seconds. All right, time's up. Sixty-six. Oh, way yeah. off, Tristan. Oh. We were both way off. I was off. That's what I said. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Got that. Thirty-eight. Thirty-four. Okay, everyone. It's a beautiful morning. Um, just waiting a, another hour or so to head over to the processor and drop off our catch. So uh, we have to schedule our delivery three hours in advance. And that's to give enforcement a chance to come down and I guess uh, inspect our load or whatever they want to do. So uh, that's what we're waiting on now. Um, just doing a few chores on the boat. It's puttering around. We'll head over there to our plant pretty soon and offload. slider right here for our reel so we can just push it forward um, where it's been in the past. There's two bolts that hold it on back there. They go through a heavy stainless plate that's bolted through the deck and also into the fish hold. So I think we'll just put like a UHMW slider, just a plastic slider with a couple of brackets on the reel that keep it centered on there and then we can just slide it forward easily out of the way. Make it easier for offloading.
doesn't really matter. Lift with your back, not with your legs. That's right. What happened? What happened? Matt said lift with your back, not your legs. <laughs> Good. Sound advice. You're the narrator. That's <laughs> true. So I think we have 32 fish for 750 pounds. Um, that's net weight. So that would be uh, in trail about the building gutters and head off. So when we weigh it, it's head on, and then they use a little conversion chart that um, basically accounts for the head, ducking for the head. It's just a set point that we use. Um, it's I think we have like a 24 pound average, mm -hmm. something like that. Fish. Got her there, partner. Good assist. Oh, you should take a turn because you're feeling a little useless. I certainly am. Here, I'll let you. Big one. This is a uh, 66, I think. Mm -hmm. And that came out to be. Uh, did you say 114? Yep. Net ready, team. Got them okay there. I think so. We so want to get them by the drum by the jaw right there. Yeah, drum right there. Ready? Yeah. Whoa. Here we go. She's a beast. Oh, yeah, no. slider next year probably, huh? Or maybe sometime next year. Uh, this is good to get done. Okay. Maybe at least after the season. Oh. Yeah, that's I meant. Okay. Probably before we get our stuff off, right? Yeah. On set. Worked on. Mm -hmm. Hi. That's it for the halibut. All right. 
guys are kind of busy right now, so um, we're just going to keep this cod for bait instead of having them fillet it up. Got lots of cod right now anyways, so that'll be fine. Nope, a little awkward, but yeah. figure it out. I guess uh, be better in the future. Yeah. Make it work for now. People might think that we had a pretty good streamlined system to begin with, but um, the line is that it's much easier to haul off the side after a few sets of figuring it out. It's a big difference. So Your management's forward. easier too. Because yeah. we can keep everything back there now, all our bait, all our tubs that are baited or unbaited before they always end up up here and we're moving them around a lot. Um, this time you just move them one time, you're done. So that's a little bit more streamlined. The pros outweigh the cons for sure. Yeah. So we'll get this pulled, emptied out and scrubbed up. Okay, now that we have our halibut offloaded, weighed along with our bycatch, we can do a fish ticket. So we have to do that at the dock before we leave and deduct this from our IEF cube balance. So, um, so halibut and sable fish are black cod. They're managed under a IEF cube program that's individual fishing quota where each an individual owns the rights to harvest the halibut or the black cod or under some circumstances you can fish it for others or lease it from others. And so it's a highly regulated program. Um, all the paperwork has to be done properly. And because we direct market our fish, that, uh, that responsibility is ours. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I just got a couple of browsers open here and we'll go into our e-landing. So this is the electronics landing system. It's just a collaboration of federal, state, and international management. Um, everybody has their own user ID that has access to this and can, can make landings. So we'll just go ahead and log in. Um, this is under Fishtail Fisheries. That's the vessel that we are landing it on. And we're going to do a ground fish landing report. There's different reports for everything ground fish, salmon, and crab. So I just have the browser open for e landings here. And there's basically a landing for ground fish, salmon, um, crab. And so. So we just click that and open up a tab and then this is where you fill in all your information processor code here and then we have to go in and fill out all this information so we'll go ahead and, and start that so there's different gear codes for different fisheries for halibut and sable fish there's uh, jig gear, gear long line gear and they just have a uh, a browser with all that information so if you go if you open up another tab it shows all the different types of gear that are allowed in Alaska um, like I say some are specific to fisheries and so you can't say use uh, troll gear to catch halibut it's not legal so um, we, can, we can use long line gear and we can use uh, mechanical jig or um, hand crank to so that's the different uh, the different types of gear that you can use for halibut, and so we use long line. So that's going to be code 61 right here, and we just pop that in, put in our permit number. This changes every year, so I just have a card reader right here. Makes it really nice and handy. Otherwise, you have to type in all this information, and that just fills it in. Species code is 200. Every species in Alaska has a different code. Halibut is 200, and the area fished is is 3A. And so that's kind of it for this first thing here. I'll just go ahead and put in the fishing dates and everything. Okay, so this is all filled out now, and so we basically we got to put in the stat area, and that's where we caught our fish. If we look up here.
we have a chart with all the different areas. There's different charts for different um, species. Basically, this is just the ground fish, shellfish one. Um, salmon has its own chart. And so, uh, let's see, we fished in two areas. And then we put in the percentage. And so that's how that works. There's different, uh, there's different codes for a delivery code, whether they're whole, bled, gutted, head on, so on and so forth. Um, ours are gutted head on. And so uh, that's what we're gonna use right now. The code we're gonna use for bait. So we gotta use a different code. Let me see here. So use not sold, I guess. Retained for bait, not sold. So 92. So 92. And so now we basically, uh, we submit this. They've got an IFQ weight calculator right here. So you can come in here and put in your halibut. So whether you, the condition is whole, or gutted, or H and G. In our case, it's gutted. And that is actually really close to our net weight up here. This is just our tally sheet that we use. And it's got all the calculations for the net weight and the total weight. Um, gives us our total round weight so we know how much bycatch we can take. It's just a nice easy spreadsheet that kind of takes the guesswork out of everything. We just measure the fish and tally them up by, by length. And then the spreadsheet does all the rest as far as breaking down the weights and um, poundage, percents of different size fish, all that good stuff. And so we were just a couple of pounds off of that weight, so that's very good. I'm going to generate this IFQ report. And then you can review it. Just as a breakdown here again, shows how many gutted from which areas, stat area, the poundage, and um, and now we'll just go ahead and we will submit this. So we're just going to hook up our printer here, um, print out our fish tickets, and our IFQ um, report, and sign that, and then we're good to go. So that's kind of like an overview of, I guess, the regulation process. Um, Alaska's very meticulous and strict about landings for fish. All the different species go through this. Um, even ones that are caught as bycatch or, or discarded at sea. And that helps our, our folks at the state and um, federal level uh, manage our fisheries for sustainability. So. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Another fish tea? Yeah, yeah just uh, chopping up this cod, getting it in salt so it firms up. So uh, keeps it, uh, preserves it until we use it. So. That's good. And it lasts quite a while, huh? Yeah, it does. I usually want to use it like you know, a couple of weeks or it's old. Yeah. And you just give it an even coat? Yeah, just That's sprinkle all. some on and make sure it has good contact with the, all the cut faces. I'd walk over there and show you, but I don't have my boots on. It's terrible. Are you unprepared, Mom? I am never prepared. Oh dear. Ill prepared. Let's cut her loose. Okay, we're going to have to do something about that. Yep. At least it's not raining, it's nice out. Yeah. Beautiful day. Got all the rain out of the system yesterday. Yeah, it was boring.
on my master flaying or bait. <laughs> I'm gonna pick every last bit off the bone. Some of these are a little big, probably, I don't know, 20 30% shrinkage when you salt them, so you don't want them being too small for the hook, it's just annoying to bait them then. Come a little big, and can always come down if they're too big. I'm bait. Facebook and to like, share, and subscribe. But you want me and Dad to do it? Not just you. I can't do it. Yeah, you can. No. People love you. Thanks for coming along on our family fun outing. See you guys next time. Some more halibut action. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap for that trip. Uh, the guys got all cleaned up and getting ready for another trip. Uh, so please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And Yeah, check out our Facebook and our Instagram, our store, EISAlaska.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.